Thank you, Daddy, for being patient with me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to be in a, uh, that unhinged way, but I'm not to be in that insurance broker that I passed the prelim preliminary test for. This was hopelessness that I was feeling. Am I the only one who was anxious All to right, be in there? No, no, no. Or for, to be in a great pouring out of the spirit? Anxious for that to just fall, to God to fall on us? To be among like-minded, true praise and worshipers, praise warriors who fasted and who are enduring through our, our tests and trials. This is what I was praying for. I just I, I was feeling hopeless because I wasn't seeing any evidence of this. Uh-huh. I'm talking about the season of hopelessness. Well, and my father's neighbor, her name is Ruth. I'm trying to get her to come here and speak to us. She's a visionary, and she shared with me a while back that Mount Zion is a house of refuge. Oh, that's what she didn't even know that that's where my preacher, Bishop uh, uh, Christopher, Christopher Lamont Day, <laughs> my pastor, <laughs> his own government. That's what she called this church. House of, that's what he called the, church, the house of reference. But well, this lady that has never been here, mm -hmm. Caucasian lady too, she's our neighbor. And she just sees me outside and she catch me and hey, um, Mrs. Tara, Mrs. Tara, I, I want to tell you something what God was showing me. And she started talking about Mount Zion. When I was telling you about the shelter yeah, right. and here having food and stuff, she was telling us about that because we are a house of refuge. Praise the Lord. Now, just to pass through, just this past Thursday, she shared with Mercedes and I that there was a wave of people coming who are looking for answers. Mm -hmm. She was demonstrating like a wave of water coming down the streets. They were looking for help in all kinds of situations beyond our wildest imagination, things that we've never been through. I know we've, we haven't been through all these things that, that we can't even think about. But these people are coming into the church house. They're looking for answers on how to get through. So she was telling us to prepare, telling us to prepare for these people to come in. They would be looking for food and water and clothes, and that's why they're telling us about the pantry. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Essentially looking for ways on how to live victorious or right. in days, which we talk about in Bible study. Yes. Wanted to know how they would survive the hell that is busting loose as we speak. Yeah. The enemy puts in my head that I'm not ready. I'm a minister. But I'm not ready, nor am I strong enough to handle it. That's what he's telling me. Powerless. I don't have enough anointing. No Holy Ghost fire. Put me in that moment of hopelessness. Have anyone ever had this moment? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Oh, God. Now let us go ahead and go through our scriptures. If you want to stand, you can. We're going to go ahead to Jeremiah. Well. 29. And 1 through 11. Lord Jesus. That's where we're going to be reading from. And in my NIV version, one. it says, a letter to the no, exiles. No. Chapter 29, verse. And we're there in the name of Jesus. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests. The prophets and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jehoiakim and the Queen Mother, the court officials, and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem. Let's see where I am. Jerusalem. The skilled workers and the artisan had gone into exile from Jerusalem. Verse 3 says, he entrusted the letter to Elasa, son of Shaphan, and to Jamara, son of Hilkiah, Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent the king Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon. It said, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carry into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. He said, build houses that are in my name and settle down with a re reliable vehicle. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Mm -hmm. Having a great career to finance your expensive eating habits. Marry that may not been waiting on. And have sons and daughters, if it's the Lord's will, at our age. Just call me Elizabeth. 
and I named my son John, like my daddy. <laughs> Five wives for your son, twin stepsons I have with my husband, and give your daughters in marriage, Lakita and Mercedes, so that they too may have sons, Keyshawn, Kair, and Cameron, they're not here today, and daughter Amaya. Increase in numbers there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace that surpasses all understanding. And prosperity. Oh, maybe winning that lottery to build that home and shelter that me and my mama talk about driving in the road. Right. Of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets or diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies. To you in my name, I have not sent them the pledge of the Lord. Verse 10, this is what the Lord said when 70 years are completed for Babylon. With the Lord a day is like a thousand. He's outside of time. I will come to you and fulfill my good promise uh -huh. to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans oh, I have for you, yes. declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope. Hallelujah. Yes, in my season of hopelessness yes, and of future. Yes. You may be seated in the name yes, of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So picture this. Sicily. <laughs> Yes. It's such an honor. 
honor that y'all are here today in the name of Jesus. With the power to cast out demons when we unify. We can heal the sick, feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, clothe the naked, yes. shout to the homeless, comfort the ones who mourn. Amen. Free the minds of the ones in prison. Uh -huh. Speak life into the dead, walking up and down these streets. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord. Standing on faith, being directed by God. And we're going to be that little flock that's leading those bigger flocks mm. by example of what God is calling the saints to do. Amen. 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 So even though we can look the part, like I, I think I look the part as a minister. Hey. hey. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Where he 
has banished us, declares the Lord. It will bring us back to the place from which he carried us into exile. Since he will bring us out of that season of hopelessness with power to command healing so that the lame will walk. Hallelujah! So that the blind will see. These are things that we're going to do at the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus. The dumb will speak. We'll be able to love like Brother Ernie. Unconditional Amen. to demonstrate faith that moves every mountain, that strengthens to carry our cross. We have to have that strength to carry our own cross. Amen. To prophesy, to prophesy to the lost. We will perform all these miracles and more. The, the book says so. We'll do more than what Jesus did when he walked the earth. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all do glory for me in the name of Jesus. Yeah.
my pastor when he brought, he reared me up when I was younger. We would come into the church just to meet. Because we all know the word of God. We know the word, right? We don't have anybody that don't know God. In the name of Jesus. If we do, we can, we can teach you about God. In the name of Jesus. Right. But I believe that everybody here knows the word of God. They know who God is. They know what God expects of us. Hallelujah. So why are we sitting here looking at each other? This is what I believe. Hallelujah. That's why I have this camera right here. Because I don't want to just talk to you guys. Because I know you, you are right. You're going to make it into that promised land. Hallelujah. I want people to see. Hallelujah. The ones who are on Facebook scrolling on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock when, you know, we, we here. Amen. But when it's scrolling, they might see something. Oh, let me see. Oh, she got a nice suit on. Let me see what she's talking about. I want them to be able to see what the word of God is telling them. The ones who don't Amen. know. In the name of Jesus. And so that they can hear something that's going to make them want to know more about God. What must I do to be saved in the name of Jesus? So we come in here and we learn and we teach and we, we, we um, gather together, assemble ourselves in unity with all the visitors and everybody coming in here. But my pastor, what he did was he took us out to Jamestown down here. We were in our jeans and t-shirts. Because, you know what, if, if, if the Lord dropped the Holy Spirit on me right now, and I want to dance, you know, it's real hard to dance looking like this. It's real hard to dance looking like this. With these, with these heels on, I break my neck like up in here. Why don't we come in church comfortable? Thank you, babies. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. I've been wanting to say that. God has allowed me to say it now. In the name of Jesus. Why are we coming in here in the name of Jesus? And we, we're, we're confined in the name of Jesus. We're sitting there pretty. We need to be, oh God, feeling and worshiping God and praising God to the best ability in the name of Jesus. Being comfortable, not being in a skirt to where we can't dance or holding that skirt down. No, God, in the name of Jesus. But what we had on is uh, T-shirts and jeans and, and tennis shoes. And we were out there. We had speakers set up. And we were out in the park. We was cooking fish, frying fish. Wow. We was had hamburgers on the grill. We were giving people food. Natural food as well as spiritual food. To the people that's out there. Just imagine if we had a park and the people in Jamestown. They come and hear it. They hear, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? I say, oh, come on, y'all, kid, these shoes on. I ain't got to cook tonight. Come on. And they come down. They're going to get a word from God. And then we're going to see people saved. Coming to the altar. Because, yeah, I'm outside. We have an altar. Um, Demons Logo saw uh, New Life Christian Ministries. We had an altar outside in the parking lot. People come up and get saved. Hallelujah. Can pray for. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. So we can do that yeah. and reach more people that are lost, not us. Reach those people. I know we're doing our own individual things. Yes, when you go out to Walmart, yes, my sister, she's all on. She all on Facebook, y'all. In the name of Jesus, she she gonna get me with the eyelashes and all of this and make me up. Uh, y'all got see the pictures. She got me looking good on there, but I don't like to be in front of the camera. This is this is not live, by the way. <laughs> I'll put it on YouTube for the people to go and look at it when they want to. But she she fixed me up because we are talking about Adelphi, our sister ministry. Who that's what we're doing. We're going out. We're going out into the the the, the nation. That's what the, the scripture said. Go out into the nation, teach. The Great Commission, teach all of this, we got to do, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So, but, mm, God, okay, I'm going to stop, I'm stop, I'm stop. But that's what I feel that is necessary. The change that needs to happen, the same old religious stuff, traditional stuff, whatever the block. We had a fit when they changed it to a different time because of COVID, getting on, on Zoom and all that kind of stuff. Let's do things differently. Hallelujah. Let's make a difference. That's why I was in this season of hopelessness because of these thoughts that I was having. I feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm not reaching enough people. I don't see people coming here, new people coming in here every 
day, every Sunday. Coming in the box, and yes, our church is filling up. We Bible study. Glory to God. Sunday school, yes, we're filling up. But I want to see the multitude come in. Asking, what is this about this man named Jesus that I hear? In the name of Jesus, I want to see it done. I need to be a part of that. Hallelujah. So that's why I'm not ashamed of that hopelessness. Because it's a good feeling that you want more. You want to do more for Christ. Hallelujah. So that's where I was. But this song, and I'm closing for real now. I'm closing for real. In the name of Jesus. I'll come down off my, my little stool. Soapbox. Soapbox. Yeah, thank you. I'm coming down. Yeah, if I step on any toes, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Something different in the name of Jesus. Change up in this time. 2020, you have to do something different to reach the people, the lost souls. But this is this song by Smoking Norfolk. I understand. Sometimes I feel like giving up. It seems like my best just ain't good enough. Lord, if you hear me, I'm calling you. Do you see? Do you care all about what I'm going through? And then he says, one more day, one more step. See, I'm preparing you for myself. And when you can't hear my voice, just trust my plan. I'm the Lord, I see, and yes, I understand. Amen. But sometimes I feel like all, I'm all alone. I just feel like a stranger so far from home. I feel like I've done all that I can do. Please, Lord, give me strength. I just, I'm just trying to make it through. Amen. He knows how much we can bear, just how much we can bear. And in the time of trouble, he promised he would always be there. I understand. The Lord is telling me, yes, I understand. Yes. I am the Lord. I see you. And yes. I understand. So church, hold, hold fast to your faith in this season of hopelessness. When you go through, if you find yourself going through or if you've been there, his word will not come back boldly. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because where there's a little hope, there's a great future. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.